and why the cost of milk in Minnesota is so high. I'm Colleen Needles. And I'm Don Shelby, the 10 p.m. reporter with Mike Fairborn and the prodigal Mark Rosen. Coming up. There's something new coming to you from Budweiser. Something completely new. It's completely different and completely refreshing. Introducing Bud Dry. It's cold filtered for smooth draft taste. And dry brewed for no aftertaste. So if you're looking for smooth draft taste for no aftertaste, try Bud Dry. iLab is joining the Pearl family. Introducing Pearl Vision Express. Same great people. Same great quality eyewear. Same fast one-hour service. And to celebrate, free glasses. Just present the coupon from newspapers and magazines. When you buy one pair of glasses, you'll get a second pair free. Now at Pearl Vision Express. You know, when it comes to money, I'm a shrewd son of a gun. I never pass up a bona fide deal, and every week I put something away in a safe place. Excuse me. Cattle Company introduces one very special prime rib dinner. A complete prime rib dinner and an unbelievable deal. Only $7.95. Yeah. Hey, fella! You cop something? A complete prime rib dinner, only $7.95 at Cattle Company. When it comes to money, nothing gets by me. Despite an unwinter-like condition, the carnival must go on, and it did, opening tonight in St. Paul. Just one of the items ahead on the 10 p.m. report. WCCO Television presents Don Shelby, Colleen Needles, Mike Fairborn, and Mark Rosen. This is the 10 p.m. report. Good evening. Our top story involves the ongoing investigation into the kidnapping of Jacob Wetterling. And how it has led to the arrest of a central Minnesota man suspected of child molestation. The 42-year-old man is from Belgrade, Minnesota. He was arrested today. He is expected to be charged with three counts of child sexual molestation, suspected of molesting two boys from the Painesville, Minnesota area. The boys are between 11 and 15 years old. The suspect allegedly enticed the boys into his car by offering candy. This allegedly took place over a three-year period. The task force investigating the kidnapping of 11-year-old Jacob Wetterling uncovered this suspect. In fact, he was interviewed by investigators at one point. We stress there is no definite link between this man and the Jacob Wetterling case at this point. But as Daryl Savage reports, authorities are checking out all the possibilities. Investigators say the molestations happened in the Painesville area. That's just 20 miles from where Jacob Wetterling was kidnapped three months ago. But is there a connection? That's what investigators want to find out. For now, there is no link. Well, that would just be uh, absolute speculation. And, and there's, uh, the only way to think about this sort of thing is to, to investigate to see if there is. There's no reason to, to speculate. The suspect does not look like the sketch released by investigators, but that does not eliminate the suspect from any connection to Jacob's case. Remember, this sketch is of an actual kidnapper who investigators thought may be linked to Jacob's kidnapping. The FBI believes the man arrested today may have molested as many as 10 other boys in the Painesville area. They hope those boys will come forward to tell their stories now that the suspect is behind bars. Here's why today's arrest could be important to the Wetterling case. The molested boys might have information that could help investigators. The suspect might know something about Jacob's disappearance or may know someone else who does. There are past cases in which child molesters have shared information with each other. In St. Joseph, Jacob's mom says the arrest is good news, even though there is no connection yet to Jacob. I just want people to still call in. I think that people need to not be afraid, especially if they know anything about this guy now. He's, don't be afraid to call in. It will help children. It will help protect children if we can get these people off the streets. Officials are urging Painesville area residents to call their sheriff's departments with information that may lead investigators closer to other molestations, if not to Jacob. Daryl Savage, WCCO Television News. The suspect is being held at the Candy, Ohio County Jail in Wilmer. He is expected to be formally charged either tomorrow or on Friday. 
An 11-year-old northeast Minneapolis boy is in juvenile detention tonight and will be for up to one month. He is charged with setting one fire and threatening to set more on the northeast side. The boy is accused of helping to start the fire at Cywick's Lumber last May. He is also accused of threatening to burn the homes of his neighbors and with carrying matches and a lighter in violation of court orders. He's being held in juvenile detention till a trial can be held. Fire experts say 80% of the children who start fires do so out of curiosity, but the other 20% want to cause damage. They generally do not see adults as their allies. Um, they don't have a good or they don't have a good support system. And a lot of times these kids are also under a lot of other stresses and they have other problems, problems in school, problems with their friends. Peterson says if a child is still setting fires by age 11, it is probably an indication the child has deeper psychological problems and needs therapy. The U.S. Justice Department says that 40% of arson fires are set by juveniles. Minneapolis city officials today decided to set up a task force designed to make it safer to drive a cab in the city of Minneapolis. The task force will include cab drivers, company owners, and people from the city administration who will be appointed within the next month. That safety issue came up most recently last week when a premier cab driver, Bill Newsma, was found shot to death in his taxi. A grand jury in Glencoe, Minnesota, has adjourned for the evening with no decision on whether to indict Philip Cole with first-degree murder. Do you remember Cole is charged with second-degree murder for the death of Michael Hogan, a Hutchinson police officer who was fatally shot December 15th in a J.C. Penney store. The grand jury reconvenes tomorrow morning. Miami police officer William Lozano today was sentenced to seven years in prison for the manslaughter deaths of two black residents. The shooting of an unarmed motorcyclist and his passenger touched off three days of rioting last January. Lozano remains free tonight pending appeal. Retired Air Force General Richard Secord will serve two years probation I think for his part in the Iran-Contra affair. After sentencing today, Secord accused former President Ronald Reagan of hiding out during the investigation. He called Reagan's lack of action, quote, cowardly. Tiananmen Square was on the minds of the U.S. Congress today. By an overwhelming margin, the House voted to override President Bush's veto of a bill that would extend the visas of Chinese students who study in the U.S. A much closer vote is expected tomorrow in the Senate. President Bush calls the legislation unnecessary, warning that the Chinese government may retaliate against Americans who are studying in China. The civil war in Azerbaijan threatens the union of Soviet socialist republics much as our own civil war threatened our union. Tonight, the Soviets closed the border between the Soviet Republic and Iran to stop arms smuggling. A map gives you a better idea of the area that we're talking about. The Azerbaijanis say they'll secede from the Union if Moscow doesn't pull out its troops. Now, here is a more detailed look at the area. Soviet troops were sent to keep the peace between Azerbaijan and nearby Armenia. They are fighting over a disputed border region. And today, for the first time, fighting moved to the Caspian Sea as the Soviets broke through a blockade near Baku. Merchant ships had blocked that harbor for five days. Governor Rudy Perpich says he'll deliver this year's State of the State address from an out-of-the-ordinary place, a suburban high school. The governor will give the address on February 15th from Bloomington Jefferson High School. He'll talk about just one topic, drug abuse. The governor's office says he has interviewed more than 70 people about drugs and received letters from hundreds of others. Attorney General Skip Humphrey, who wrote many of the state's drug laws, is reportedly annoyed at the governor's apparent sudden interest in drugs this election year. Humphrey has scheduled a 12-city tour just before the State of the State address to talk about his own drug plan. Coming. Tonight, the focus was on the state capitol again, but for the Winter Carnival, not politics. You had to know your numbers to participate, as the Winter Carnival included three different countdowns. The first in Rice Park at the King's Castle and Courtyard. Five, four, three. Lights illuminated the royal family's home for the carnival, which includes detailed ice sculptures. Some of the kids in the crowd even got a little practice for when they grow up and ride carnival floats. Then it was north to the Capitol grounds for the lighting of the massive snowman. The flashing lights will give him a smile when temperatures drop and a frown when they rise. Then, one more countdown for an ice carving at the Capitol.
Now that Firebird is the first work by Soviet ice carvers for the Winter Carnival. Now with everything going on over in St. Paul, we can't forget some changes being made downtown Minneapolis. The Nicollet Mall is about to change its look and the beginnings are already in place. So far, the only thing new is the banners and the lights, but the people doing the remodeling of the mall say the additions are a preview of bigger alterations, which will be coming, they say, later in the year. Well, there is still more to come tonight on the 10 p.m. report. Just before sports, an unlikely pair took to the radio airwaves tonight trying to talk about sports. And then after weather, if you've noticed a jump in the price of milk, we'll explain why. But next in Dimension, has Minnesota learned a new way to deal with the victims of child sexual abuse? And is it a better way? It just got better. The guaranteed rebate from Dodge. Now, the guaranteed best rebate this model year is extended to Dodge's family of family cars. There's still 1,000 on caravans, plus 1,000 on dynasties, 1,000 on spirits, and 1,000 on sporty shadows. That's the guaranteed rebate, only from your Dodge dealer. Nobody can match us. Not Ford, not Chevy, nobody. Hurry, final days. This offer ends January 31st. First. What's new in agriculture? Ask your new Northrop King dealer. He has what's new. He has two new alfalfas, three new milos, ten new soybeans, and in corn, 14 new hybrids. Being the second largest seed company in America gives the new Northrop King the resources to develop more new products. So ask your dealer. He has something new for every farm in America. New products from the new Northrop King, the second largest seed company in America. Everybody knows that milk's for babies. So charming, disarming, whatever they do. Everybody knows that milk's for babies. And wouldn't you know it, baby, milk's for you. Salt baby skin, strong baby bones, bright baby smile, and ooh, great muscle tone. Wouldn't you know it, baby? Milk's for you. It's a health kick, baby. Why settle for some boring, boxy family van? The incredible all-new 1990 Pontiac Transport Van has arrived at your Pontiac Excitement Dealers. Transport features a spacious interior design, providing versatile, easily changeable seating choices for up to seven passengers. And compare Transport SE's value. It's sticker priced over $6,000 less than Chrysler's Town & Country Van. And Pontiac guarantees excitement. Room for the family. Pontiac Excitement Style. Test drive transport at your Pontiac Excitement Dealers now. Tonight in Dimension, what those in Minnesota who handle cases of child sexual abuse have learned about dealing with the victims. The subject came back to light after a case in California. Last week, jurors in California ended a three-and-a-half-year child sex abuse trial by acquitting the operators of the Martin Preschool. They had been charged with nearly 100 counts involving scores of alleged victims. The trial cost $15 million. Now experts say the case could influence the prosecution of child sex abuse cases nationwide. The case and the concerns about the way it was prosecuted sound very familiar here in Minnesota. Six years ago, 24 people in Scott County were accused of abusing children, some their own. Months later, one man pleaded guilty, two parents were acquitted, the rest of the charges dropped. In both the Scott County case and the California case, the prosecutors were blamed for creating hysteria and mishandling the case. Tonight, Trish Van Pilsen looks at what authorities have learned from both cases and how they're trying to prevent a repeat. The comparison between Scott County and McMartin cases was inevitable. Not guilty. Sweeping charges of abuse. She is charged with 12 counts of criminal sexual conduct. High-profile prosecutors. Uh, I hope to God that, uh, that none of us ever hear anything in the future about either one of them molesting children. Grueling testimony. She also insisted that children were made to perform sex acts. And in the end, acquittals and the undeniable sense that something went very wrong. Jurors couldn't tell if the children were telling their own stories or parroting the words of the numerous investigators and counselors who had questioned them. It wasn't a criticism of the kids as much as an indictment of authorities. Defense attorneys in both cases, who coincidentally were law school classmates, made the same argument. The way the child is coached and questioned by police officers and questioned again and questioned again 
uh, becomes a problem. I think a, a, a lot of times in situations like that, because of the attention given the child, the, uh, the allegations get larger and they, they get more exaggerated. An editorial cartoon captured the fears of child advocates that cases like Scott County would keep people from believing child victims and keep prosecutors from going after their abusers. It appears it hasn't happened that way. So I feel indebted to those people. Um, they made some mistakes, and so we learned from them. We can improve the process and go on from here. Is this more about your dad? Does your dad have a goofy looking love like that? Yeah. Does he really? Yeah. <laughs> This is Corner House, a child abuse evaluation center. It grew from concerns about the Scott County prosecution. Here, authorities from Minneapolis and Hennepin County have developed a new way of questioning children who may have been abused, a way that's easier on the kids and better for prosecutors. Uh, my body grinds are used to uh, allow children to talk about the names for their body parts, asking their gender, such as I might ask, oh, what's this? The child would identify what that is, or what's that? Ask them to identify what body part that is. Also on these, these drawings are used to ask questions about touch. Where do you like touches on your body? What kind of touches do you like? Oftentimes they'll say kisses or hugs and we'll put X's, you know, wherever it is. Sometimes they'll point to the genitals as places that they have been kissed. And I ask them who kissed them there. I think when, when you look at an interview that we've done here, it's very obvious. Um, words haven't been put in their, in their mouth. The interviews are videotaped, so jurors can see that. Does this kind of look like Tim? Yeah? Have you ever seen Tim with our recorder? Yeah. While the interview is underway, police, prosecutors, and child protection workers watch from another room. They can phone in any additional questions they have to the interviewer. That avoids the need for repeated interviews. Again, authorities believe jurors are more likely to believe the child. And during a trial, a good interview can make a case. A bad one can destroy it. It provides a more palatable case for the jury. Uh, they can see the way that we conduct the investigation. They can see that it's very sanitary, that the children, uh, that the stories that the children describe are their own stories, not the stories of anybody else. The videotaped interviews aren't just used during criminal trials. They may be shown to a suspect before trial to try to get a guilty plea. Or if there's no evidence a child has been abused, they may be used to clear a suspect. Authorities admit this new approach doesn't guarantee that the mistakes of the Scott County or McMartin cases won't happen again, but it makes it less likely. Even defense attorneys agree investigators have learned and improved their techniques. But the real measure of the program's success doesn't lie in numbers of convictions or guilty pleas, but in making a child feel comfortable telling the truth, a truth that can be painful and frightening. For Dimension, I'm Trish Van Pilsom. The corner house is now used by the Minneapolis Police Department, but will soon be available to investigators in all departments of Hennepin County. Cases must be referred there by police or child protection workers. In the six months it's been open, nearly 200 children have been interviewed. In 52% of the cases, authorities believe they have confirmed that abuse occurred. As for the players in the Scott County case, James Rood, the man who pleaded guilty to abusing children and implicated the parents, is still in prison. Lois and Robert Bent are the only parents to go on trial. They are divorced. The eldest of their children is suing a psychologist in the case for malpractice. Prosecutor Kathleen Morris, who was voted out of office, is in private practice in Shakopee. And today, she said, the new interview procedures are designed to protect prosecutors, not children. Hey, Tom, yeah. a special bulletin coming in. Oh, yeah? What's it say? Let's see. One Pass Surface Blend offers big benefits over Two Pass Incorporation. Preserves soil moisture. Yeah. Saves topsoil, reduces compaction. This is great. Hey, wait, there's more. Saves growers 330 an acre over Two Pass Incorporation. Hey, we got to look into this surface blend. For full season weed control with One Pass Surface Blend, it's canon for soybeans and lasso for corn or beans. Every year, for the last 10 years, the government has conducted a crash course on safety. The class of 89 included one very distinguished graduate, the Audi 100. A car that not only passed the course, but received the best score ever recorded. Graduating summa cum laude. 
from the school of hard knocks. The 100 from Audi, the alternate route. Was Lee Harvey Oswald a member of the KGB? Was the assassination attempt on Pope John Paul II masterminded by a Bulgarian police force? Was a European critic poisoned by government killers? The secret files of the cold and calculating KGB. As the wall crumbles, Jack Anderson exposes Eastern Europe's most secretive operations. The horrors of the police state on Inside Edition. Inside Edition, Wednesday night at 10.35 on Channel 4. This piece of athletic equipment is perfect for baseball, football, hockey, and more. What is it? A radio tuned to WCCO AM 830. And he goes long for Anthony. No other radio station has our athletic ability. On WCCO Radio, we have 186 different news segments every day. From world and local news to business, weather, sports, and more. Turn to WCCO AM Radio 830, where the news runs like clockwork. <laughs> kind of, he says. Kind, kind, of, kind of winter, winter out right. there today. Well, uh, down in Milwaukee, winter storm warnings. It seems really? like every storm we've had has been to our south, to our north. We had snow up in North Dakota today, and uh, probably as much as uh, one to four inches of snow across uh, eastern Iowa tonight hmm. and uh, southern Wisconsin. So they're getting nailed again while we're sitting here with partly cloudy skies. I think he's just it. trying to rub it into the organizers <laughs> yeah. of the carnival. No, yeah. Hey, though, I do have some uh, good news for snowmobilers and cross-country skiers. We'll show them where the snow is. It's going to be <laughs> snowier next year. Is that what you're going to tell them? <laughs> Probably. 36 was the high. Low temperature of uh, 30. Not a great deal of uh, temperature change. In fact, we're actually dropping below that right now. Our temperatures are starting to drop off, well, into the 20s. 27 degrees right now with northwest winds at 15 and a dew point of 18 degrees with the falling barometer. Here's the snow cover map from across the country. You notice that we're sitting right on a little island of uh, no snow here, but snow has increased very rapidly up to the northeast. Now, we're going to zoom in on this area right here because I understand that that's where the snowmobiler's head is kind of up to the north and to the northwest a little bit. Well, can you see that this is Detroit Lakes right in here, six to eight inches of snow, but Fergus Falls just barely has snow on the ground. South of that, Alexandria doesn't have any snow on the ground. Increases very rapidly from Alexandria up to Wadena. You go through two to four, four to six, six to eight, and eight to 12 inches of snow. So there's some very, very steep snow gradients in here, but your best bet if you want to find snow on the ground is to head to the north, Wadena, Park Rapids, Bemidji, and northeastward from there. What snow we have, well, uh, it's been increasing down over Iowa and up through southern Wisconsin tonight with the uh, winter storm warning in effect now for the extreme southeastern corner of Wisconsin. Have a little area of flurries up to the northwest of us that could still bring us some flurry activity through the night tonight. And most of the snow that's falling to the north is probably going to stay. Temperatures are well into the teens, well below freezing. Here to the south, our temperatures are going to continue to hover right around the freezing mark for the next uh, couple of days. We might warm up a little bit on Friday, but we have a very complex weather map. A strong low pressure area to the south drawing up a lot of Gulf moisture, some heavy rains and thunderstorms down through here. This front is going to start moving away from us. We should see some partial clearing throughout the day tomorrow. Then a warm front approaching with a chance of some flurries and increasing clouds. Then a cold front will come through, cool us down for the weekend. Maybe another shot of snow sometime Saturday or late on Saturday. High temperatures in the meantime should warm up to around 30 degrees here in the Twin Cities. Then some warmer air and back into the cooler air. Again, just kind of up and down and up and down. Our forecast for tonight, mostly cloudy, still a chance of some of those flurries moving through us, but heaviest snows off to the south and the southeast. A low of 21 degrees with northwest winds at 5 to 15 miles an hour. Partly cloudy, increasing clouds late tomorrow. 32 degrees for a high. Again, the winds out of the northwest at 5 to 15. Then cloudy tomorrow night, 25 degrees for a low. And for Friday, mostly cloudy, windy, and a few flurries. But look at that, back up to 38 degrees. Then on Saturday, we'll see uh, some of that uh, snow lingering in. It'll be refreshing, I guess, to get a little bit of snow during the Winter Carnival Parade. Temperatures won't be so cold that you can't enjoy that. And we'll cool off the latter half of the weekend. It'd be refreshing to have snow in winter, period. <laughs> <laughs> right, we'll probably refresh it to death during the month. All right, thanks. <laughs> if you are the milk buyer in the family, you have no doubt noticed how much prices have gone up in the past year. Milk cost 24% more at Twin Cities grocery stores than it did just one year ago. The biggest jump since the Agriculture Department started keeping records. The reason for the increases have to do with changes in the government and changes in the weather. Alan Cox reports. Milk makes it into most grocery carts, but recently it's come at a price. The cost of whole milk is up 35 cents a gallon since September in Twin Cities groceries. 
Almost all the increase has gone back to the farmers. Relief after some tough years in the 80s. <laughs> Makes you feel a lot better. You got some extra money you can do, make improvements, or put it in the bank if you desire. Better Christmas, <laughs> those kind of things. For most dairy farmers, it was a nice little bonus. The farmers are benefiting from the law of supply and demand. The supply of milk has been shrinking. You may not be able to tell it passing by on the highway, but there are fewer cattle in Minnesota than there were a few years ago. The reasons are a combination of government policy and the climate. The drought of 88 and last year's wet spring reduced the supply of grain and hay that cattle eat. That persuaded some farmers to get out of the business. Thousands more dropped out in the mid-80s when the government paid them to get rid of their cattle and avoid a milk surplus. Now it seems that worked too well. But experts say milk prices are about to decline to the relief of consumers. They're going to find food to continue to be an exceptionally good buy for them so we get uh, reasonable weather. If that happens, milk prices should go down through the first half of the year. Alan Cox, WCCO Television News, Corcoran. But they say the price of cheese is already on its way down, and experts say milk prices should be falling by about March. Over the years at Perkins Family Restaurants, we've used all sorts of pots to make just about everything, except, ironically, our three new delicious pot pies, all in a fresh-baked flaky pastry crust. Introducing our beef, chicken, and seafood pot pies, only at Perkins, where we've taken the pot out of the pot pie, just not out of the name. Welcome to the U.S. West Cellular time trials to prove that mobile phone service from U.S. West Cellular actually buys you time. We're having two identical businessmen race to reach their anxious customer, Gwendolyn, at her desk. And the best time wins. Ready? Set? Go! Hello, Gwendolyn. We have a winner. Proof that with U.S. West Cellular, what you're really buying is time. U.S. West Cellular. Making the most of your time. I could sure use my tax refund now. With H&R Block's Rapid Refund Program, you don't have to wait. Great, but I'm a little short of cash right now. With Rapid Refund, you don't need any money. What's that? With Rapid Refund, H&R Block files your federal return electronically with the IRS, so your refund loan is on its way to you in a matter of days. You don't need any cash. All fees can be deducted from your check. Available whether Block prepares your return or not. That's the way it ought to be. That's the new Rapid Refund Program from H&R Block. For me, it's a truck on the weekend, and it's a car during the week. It pays to drive a winner. That's a day Chevrolet. One of the reasons why I chose the Blazer over Cherokee was to uh, was for headroom. And I did do quite a bit of price shopping, found the Blazer to be the most competitive car in its, in its category. It's uh, basically your all-around vehicle. It's the day Chevrolet. It pays to drive a winner. It was Excelsior's David Wheaton. He was the only American to make it to the quarterfinals of the Australian Open. <laughs> the Twin Cities' true renaissance man tried his hand at yet another avocation tonight. Yes, that is Don Shelby you heard co-hosting WCCO Radio Sports Night earlier this evening. Shelby's sparkling banner was almost too much for his partner, Channel 4 producer Kevin Smith. The Leafs won, the Stars nothing. That's what it was the last time again. But the period's over now. Oh, that's, that's how you do that? Yeah. At the when, end of things. So it's, it's, uh, it's more important. There's it's a milestone. And there are two periods to go, uh, I believe. <clears throat> well, so. one thing's for sure. Mark's feeling a lot more secure tonight. Yeah. And you... You love it. Uh, you doing Best Buys with Stephen Sharon tomorrow? Or what's yeah, the next yeah, I'm going to start that next. You know, between, between Kevin Smith and I and me, all the, all the world sports knowledge is right in there. You had a good yeah. time. Had, uh, all right, let's get into it. Let's, yes, let's what, this, this is the time. real thing. No, I'm glad to be back on dry land. You didn't miss much of the North Star game while you're doing this. The Stars spent another frustrating and brutal evening on the road. And I guess what else is new for Minnesota teams? That 7 3 loss at Toronto. Also had its share of ironies. A five-minute major penalty against Toronto was the turning point for the Leafs. Watch this. The Stars scored, but right into their own net. Larry Murphy knocked the puck in past John Casey. And if John Casey wasn't already frustrated, being pulled put him over the edge. Kerry Taco went in, and watch Casey. He couldn't even break his own stick. So things were, went for the North Stars tonight. 
the clincher in this bizarre game. John Cordick, his team leading 7-3, a minute to go, assaults Mike Madano. The blindsided Madano was shaken up, and I don't know, the NHL, I don't know how they managed to figure these things out, just for being in the way of that crazed maniac. Madano received a minor penalty for roughing. Cordick got the usual punishment. He should be suspended, but you probably won't find that out for a couple of weeks. Elsewhere in the NHL, Tommy Kervis, by the way, scored two for Toronto. Buffalo beat Chicago 3-2. Quebec losing to Montreal 7-3 and New Jersey 3-2 over Washington. Iowa and Minnesota created a lot of excitement at Williams Arena tonight. Yes, I know the Gophers and Hawkeyes basketball game is tomorrow night. I'm talking about a Big Ten, big-time wrestling showdown. And there was good reason the crowd tonight was as big and vocal as we've seen in a long time. Iowa ranked third in the nation, the Gophers 12th. The media coverage, bigger than any match of the past couple of years, a live broadcast back to Iowa, along with more still photographers for one match than you'd see for an entire season. Vern Gagne, better known for his professional exploits, was one of the great amateur wrestlers of all time. Minnesota Athletic Director Rick Bay coached Michigan to the Big Ten wrestling title in 1973. Since then, Iowa has won 16 straight titles, and they are well on their way to number 17. They handled Minnesota 31-7, the feature match here. 134-pounder sophomore Tom Brands ranked number one in the country, a 5-3 decision over Minnesota's Dave Zaniga. Majority of Iowans, are, wrestlers are from the state of Iowa, and what a dynasty they have. The Gopher basketball team, meanwhile, is ranked number nine in the country, according to a computer poll used to pick teams for the NCAA tournament. Indiana, Michigan, and Purdue are right behind the Gophers, with Illinois ranked number 14. Clem Haskins Gophers spent the afternoon in their favorite place, Williams Arena, preparing for tomorrow night's game against Iowa. The Gophers' road woes are well documented, and Monday's alley-oop disaster is easily remembered, but the Gophers have a positive it's outlook. It's definitely good. Uh, like I said, you have to approach each day as an individual day, and uh, people will test your character, and you just have to be ready for the test. We want people to worry about Minnesota. We feel like we have some things we can do, people can be concerned. We respect everybody we play, but we fear no one. The Gophers host Iowa tomorrow night and Indiana on Sunday. Both games will be on national TV. The Hoosiers warmed up for their trip to Williams by losing tonight at home. Indiana native Kirk Manns scored 25 for Michigan State, leading the Spartans past the unpredictable Hoosiers 75-57. MSU controlled the game really from start to finish. Matt Stenega did the job inside with 13 points for the Spartans, who are now 5-1 and one in the Big Ten, but unranked nationally. Elsewhere, Oklahoma over Iowa State. Duke defeats North Carolina State in overtime by three. St. John's over Providence and an upset Georgia over LSU in overtime. And Connecticut 99-77 over Central Connecticut State. After four straight wins, David finally fell to a Goliath. David Wheaton of Excelsior lost to third seed at Stefan Edberg late last night in the quarterfinals of the Australian Open. Wheaton went down in four sets but managed some nice points. That perfectly placed drop shot left Edberg shaking his head, but the Swede's strength and experience just wore down Wheaton. So did the 140-degree heat at courtside, and Edberg overhead finished it off. 20-year-old David Wheaton playing in his first Grand Slam quarterfinal, putting up a nice fight, but losing 7-5, 7-6, 3-6-6-2. hearing a lot more about that young man in the next few years. You've been talking about him for three years, I remember. He's you. on his way. Good. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Mark. Coming up next, the polarization of West Germany. Here are tonight's winning numbers in the Wisconsin Megabucks Lottery. Our low rates on airfares and hotels will make your winter vacation a breeze. Sailing, sailing. So with MLT, you'll always have a worry-free vacation. Ooh, no matter where you end up. Worry-free MLT vacations. taste Progresso, you know it. There's no soup quite like it. Progresso has that sunny Italian flavor, a special goodness all its own. There's no soup like Progresso. 
Ford and your Ford dealer have some great holiday news. Now get low 4.8% financing for terms up to 48 months or a $600 cash bonus on America's design leader Ford Taurus. Sedans, wagons, and the high-performance Taurus SHO. The news is you can get one low finance rate of 4.8% for terms up to 48 months or a $600 cash bonus from Ford. Don't wait. It's a limited-time offer. See your Ford dealer today. Look what's shaking at West Germany's Karls Ruhl Zoo. A tiny polar bear cub born a little over a month ago is attracting quite a bit of attention. Well, most of that attention is coming from the cub's mom, who is so protective that zookeepers don't dare go near her prize offspring. Consequently, they're not sure yet if it is a boy or a girl. They've got two names ready, though. Anton, if it's a boy. Antonia, if it's a girl. Looks more like a Don to me. <laughs> Why do I want to have that <laughs> in my cute. house? That size. <laughs> right. <laughs> Thanks That's for joining us tonight. <laughs>